Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to show you how to file an individual use tax return. This is not a logged in activity, so we'll begin in the main tax portal homepage and navigate to the businesses panel, where we'll click the option to file a use tax return. Before we begin, there's a few notes that we'd like to point out. First, any required fields are indicated by a red asterisk or a red circled I, and you will be unable to continue until all these fields have been completed. Next, there is a save draft button at the bottom of the screen. You may click this at any time to save your progress and continue later. Or you can click the cancel button. This does not save your progress. And finally, to navigate back to a previous page, you may click on the previous button or on a previous page name in the blue bar at the top. So we begin on the identification page. The first question asks if we are a business. And for the purpose of today's demonstration, we have said no. But this is a good time to point out that this return can be used by both individuals and businesses. However, it is meant for only isolated incidents. As the note at the top of the screen says, this return is to report use tax on an individual basis and not meant to be on a recurring basis. If you are a business that needs to report use tax on a recurring basis, please submit an application for a use tax account. And for more information, you can see our video on registering for a tax account. The next requirement on this page is to enter in our social security number. Had we said that we are a business, we would be asked for our federal ID number instead. And that's all we have on this screen, so we'll click next to proceed. Continuing with the identification, we'll enter in our first and last name. And click next to proceed. Next is our mailing information. So we'll enter in our address. As always, addresses must be verified by the United States Postal Service by clicking the blue link at the bottom of the screen. And once you've verified your address, you may click next to continue. Next is the individual use tax screen where we'll enter some information about each piece of property on which we are reporting use tax. So we'll enter in the purchase date. A description of the property purchased. The VIN or serial number of that piece of property, if applicable. And the purchase price. And we will repeat this process for each piece of property. As we can see at the top of the screen, our total taxable purchases has been added up from the purchase price column. And on the second line, our total main use tax due has been auto-calculated for us. We'll confirm that this appears accurate and click Next to proceed. On the balance due screen, we again can see the amount due, and we are asked if we'd like to make a payment now. For the purposes of today's demonstration, we're going to say yes, and click Next to continue. On the payment screen, we are asked to indicate whether our bank account is checking or savings, our routing number, our account number, and our account number again to confirm. The payment date will default to today, and the amount will default to the total amount due, though you may enter a lesser amount if you so choose. Either way, you'll be asked to confirm the amount again. and we'll click Next to proceed. Next is the summary page. We'll verify that the amounts here appear correct and we'll click Next to proceed. 
On the declaration page, we are asked to check the box indicating that our return is true, correct, and complete, and enter in the first and last name of the person filing the return. And again to confirm, and then we'll click Submit. Here we are asked to enter in our email address. And again to confirm. And we'll click OK. This email address is repeated back to us on the confirmation page along with our confirmation code. As always, Maine Revenue Services recommends that you keep this information for your records. That concludes our demonstration of how to file an individual use tax return. Thank you all for watching.